Sounds good. I'd like to welcome everybody for coming out today. Um, obviously, it's a big transition we're about to undergo here at Bowles, and I just wanted to uh, uh, introduce Coach Rogers and, and let him uh, answer some questions. Obviously, I know you have a lot for him, and, and uh, uh, not take too much of your time. Just turn it over to Coach Rogers and uh, let him say some things, and then if you guys have questions, uh, we'll follow up with that. I have one suggestion. I see uh, Dr. Trainers here. I don't know if Dave's here, Mr. Frey. But for us, okay, there we go. For us guys that have got a bad leg, <laughs> all the years, I've been thinking this for 28 years, they need a rail so that I can get up and down on this thing. And I think it's a, uh, I kept thinking after 20 years, somebody's going to put a rail up there. But, uh, if you'll give me a little hand back, because I can just imagine what I'm going to do. I don't really know what this is supposed to do. If I'm here to answer questions or make statements or whatever, but uh, should we start with questions and see what anybody wants to ask? Yeah, just talk about the decision. I know it's, you know, I know it's got to be hard for you. I know how much you love the coach, but you, you said you just can't put 100% into it, you know, so just talk a little bit about the decision and when you made it. Well, it's a, obviously this summer I had health problems and I've kind of been battling it all along. I want to coach. I mean, I, it's what I know, it's what I love doing. And it's just gotten to be where I can't, my classes, I'm not, I'm sitting in a chair. I'm not coaching, I'm not teaching. That's not fair to the kids, and I, I don't want to, you know, short, shorten them in any way. In that, they need somebody that's active, that's able to do things. I have to get about every seven to ten days. I've got to get drained. Uh, last mo Monday, I was drained, and it was 9.75 liters. That's 2.2 pounds per liter, so that's 20 pounds. They tell you, I'm getting drained tomorrow. The only thing I could wear today was this covering, and I'm not a fat person. <laughs> but when the fluid is built up, I'm short of breath, I can't do my job. When I'm not, the day or two after they do it, I could coach. But you can't coach a team that way. There's no way to do it. There's no way to handle your classes like you should. So I think it's just something that's happened, and there's very little I can do about it. I know you've been through a lot physically throughout your life. So was this year, though, the most taxing in terms of, you know, I mean, I saw you this summer, and, you know, they're telling you, Corky, you don't have to be out here, but that's not you. You're always out here. That's what you want right. to do. So. Well, you know, yes, it, it was, but we've got so many good guys around us. You know, one of the things, Dan, that I would really like people to understand is, and I'm not ever trying to be humble about this, but I've had such good people working with me all these years. And a lot of the successes that we've had have been because of these guys. And that's why I think the program can go on. I, you know, I think I'm a part of it. But, uh, you know, I brought work habits and work ethic. But knowledge-wise, they're smarter, smarter than I was. You know, I think when you look back at games, I, I know we, uh, I know I got out coached in games. I know that sometimes. That always bothered me. I don't think we ever got outworked. I do not think that happened. I think I, if, if I could, you know, go back and make a certain call at a certain time, I could have changed the outcome of some things. But, uh, our guys that we, we have here, uh, I was telling Coach Flynn from Rebald, who I had at Rebald Junior, and he had quite a coaching career at Rebald, coaching basketball and football out there. Uh, one of the things that I felt like, Dan, 
because of our staff and the way we had worked at Lee High School and here at both. A lot of times we go to play people and, you know, I hate to say it, I never tell a team this, but I felt sorry for the other team. I knew they had good kids, they were big and strong looking, coaches were good, but they didn't know what they were getting into. We worked every day all year. We didn't make many mistakes. And a lot of these teams would fall by the wayside as the game went on. It wasn't because they weren't well coached. It wasn't because they didn't have good players. They had not put in what our kids had put in and what our coaches had. So any success we had, I think a lot of it came from that. I haven't really talked to them as a group individually. I've had, you know, someone come to me. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that we, Cole, and you know from being with us, it's, a, it's not Corky Rogers, the coach. It's we're all coached. We're all part of it. Everybody plays a role in this thing. And the success that goes on, there are so many people that we have to depend on. And... You know, we, we've been blessed to have had that. So the part that I played is just, you know, I was lucky to get the job, to do the best I could, but a great support all the way around as far as the kids go. Uh, you know, I, I hate it for them because I wanted to be there for them. But uh, they'll, they're kids. They'll, they'll adjust. That tied in a particular problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got him out of class. Somebody did. I if y'all don't know, that's my grandson over there who's probably the happiest guy that I'm not going to coach because I probably got on him more than any other person out there uh, along the way. But uh, he's actually a fairly decent player. I've never told him that. <laughs> uh, but, no, I, yeah, I just, uh, the kids, you know, I, can you remember when you were 16 years old? I mean, you know. Okay, coach, nice seeing you. You know, I'm going my way. You got a got life to go through here. Um, what else we got? You, uh, you mentioned the support. And one of the neat things about always coming over here and watching you guys is, you know, you and all of the assistants who weren't just assistants to you, obviously. They're your best of friends, and right. you guys did everything together. I'm just curious how that part of it factors in and, and you know, I, it's just a neat thing watching you guys through the years. And stuff well, like it's, it's, it's been fun. That's another reason why I think it's lasted as long as it has. And, and you know, if I was healthier, it would go on. Uh, because we all get along. And we all pick at each other and have fun. And, you know, really every day you come to work is not work. It's a, you know, it's another challenge that day. But it's, it's still having a good time and enjoying life. One of the things I found out early on it's like coaches meetings. You know, do you, how do you set up a coaches meeting? You've got people that have young kids. You have people that have church commitments. I'm talking about weekends now. You have, you have people that they want to go to the Florida game. You have people that want to do this. So when do you have a coaches meeting? Now some guys will set it up and it's it's going to be eight to six that day, and it's this no matter what. You know, I just didn't think that was fair. So what I did was say, I'm going to be there at this time. You want to be there? Fine. You can fit it into your thing. Fine. But we got to get this job done somehow. If you have to do it at your house and get it done, do it there. But you given and taken. I think it helped instead of being cut and dried that you've got to be here at this time. And, and that turns away so many guys because of commitments. And there's more to life than coaching football. You know, it doesn't seem like it to us sometimes, but, uh, uh, you know, it is. What are Friday nights going to be like for you? Well, that's a, anybody that kind of probably knows, but, uh, you know, obviously Friday for us is big with the games, and I was uh, at Rebalt Junior, 
I was coaching a Revolt senior, and the head coach at the time was a guy named Alan Harrell, and he told us, and here I was new to coaching, and Revolt senior and junior right beside each other, so I just walked across the field. He said, uh, we're going to have a party at my house for the coaches after every victory. I said, that sounded great. Well, we were 0 and 10. <laughs> And I thought, if I ever get to be a head coach, I won't want after every game. I don't care if it's victory or loss. And my, my poor wife and children have come up. There's been a Friday nights for, you know, 40-something years that there's been people at the house. And the different coaches' wives would cook and uh, Sometimes we bought things out, whatever it was, but it was a chance to be together, and uh, it, it was a lot of fun. I tried to keep the parents away from that the best I could, but uh, I just thought that was the way of, of doing it. You know, I have a, something else. People think that I'm a, a real disciplinarian on certain things. There was a, an old coach who I thought, when I went to Lee High School, was a student named Warren Kirkham. Warren Kirkham, a lot of people, his name has kind of been forgotten over the years, was a very successful coach at Lee High School. And when I was a sophomore, he was the head football coach. Very tough man. I mean, just tough. And when I became a head coach, we were at a function one time, and he said to me, Coach, don't ever set a rule that you can't bend a little. I thought coming from him, I didn't think he'd bend for anything. <laughs> but if you put something on paper and you make a rule out of it, then you have to follow it. So I don't have many things written down that people have to follow. We still try to hold true to our principles. But their situations change. Kids change. They're different. Everything's different. It's not the same every time. And we all want to put it in this one bag and think it's all going to come out the same. Well, it doesn't. So you have to change that way a little bit. But still stick by your beliefs and, and you know, try to do what's right. I've always told people this, too. I don't care how poor a neighborhood you come from. I don't care how rich a neighborhood you come from. Right is right and wrong is wrong. It doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. You might have this and I don't have this, but if you're teaching me right, in which many of the mamas and grandmothers and people that have raised people have done, uh, they're teaching right things. Back when I was young, Nobody in here kind of can remember this far back. Maybe Doc Trainer, we could, but uh, the uh, we used to go on rides. Our family would go like Sunday evening. We would ride Sunday afternoon. We'd try to go to St. Austin. Back then, there was no Fuller Warren Bridge. You had to go through the Main Street Bridge down, all the way across, and go. So that would be our ride during the day. But it was Christmas time one time, and I went by, we went to look at Christmas lights. And as a family, it was my mom and dad and I. And boy, you saw some of these families that had just thousands of lights. It was just so beautiful looking. You know, as a young kid, that impressed me. And then we came to a neighborhood, and there was one candle, I'll never forget it, you know. Uh, sitting in a window. And my dad said to me, you know, that candle means the same to those people as all those lights mean to the other. They just don't have the, the money, that, you know, to do that. So I've always believed that uh, it's nice being wealthy. It's nice having things. But, uh, uh, your beliefs and what you stand for is more important. Come on now, how about some questions? I got. Are you going to stick it around? I know you're not going to walk away and not come back, right? 
you know, you've got more energy. I told her, but she's got more energy than anybody I know. That's the way she does it. She's carrying those cameras around and all the stuff she's having to do. Uh, no, I, I want to help any way I can. You know, I'm not going to sit and sit down and do nothing. I'm just not me. But uh, uh, if they want me to help as a ball boy, I'll be a ball boy. I don't care. I don't have any pretense about anything. But uh, I want to stay active, at least in my mind. And if I can help out in some ways, I'd be glad to. But the bowl school has meant so much to me and my family. And it came at a time in my life where I had been injured, uh, car wreck, and so forth, and I couldn't get around. And from that day on, it was the year before I came to Bowles, um, I, I couldn't get in a stance, I couldn't run a step, I couldn't do any of the things that I'd always done. And so when I came over here, I was a, an injured person. But Bowles treated our family so well and gave me the opportunity to have good coaches with me, gave me the opportunity to coach great kids, and it's just been a fun ride ever since. There really has been. And, you know, I'd like it to continue, and I'd like it to continue for the school. Let's see what they can do. Anybody you heard from that you were surprised or didn't think you'd hear from here since the word got out? Uh, I got a call last night. I actually didn't talk to him. We'll call him back today. George Smith, you guys don't probably know who he is, but he was once the winningest football coach in Florida history at St. Thomas Aquinas. He retired a few years ago, and uh, he called. I haven't seen him in quite a few years, but uh, I think, uh, I, you know, I read the paper and saw some names of some people that were in there. Who picks those pictures they put in the paper? Jesus. Not me. <laughs> I was going to say, can you find some that I have a hat that fits? Or well, I got, well, it looks like I have a beanie on my head or something. All your hair is black. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was. But uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the media has treated us very fairly and treated me especially. Uh, I, I felt like over the years. Uh, one of the things that I think of something I am proud of though too is that when we got beat, our coaches, our players, I never wanted to make an excuse. There's so many times when you beat people, wow, the referees beat us, the so-and-so beat us, the so-and-so. No, I just, we got beat. We'll try to do better next time. But don't make excuses. There's, that does no good. You don't advance your program by making excuses. And we tried to let our kids know that from the start. You know, we're going to give it our best. Sometimes it's not good enough. And does that make you a loser? No. You had a bad day. Things didn't work right. We could have done things better. If, if you don't think it's been frustrating for me, these last state championship games. And we, for a while there, we were on a roll where, you know, I thought people that came in second place were, I didn't worry, worry about them, but now, I mean, we, we got so many seconds in a row there at the end that uh, it was disappointing in a sense because our kids had worked so hard and our coaches had coached so hard and we wanted to win. But, we just, uh, I, I know some of our coaches are here. I actually haven't watched the championship game yet. I kind of do that on purpose some years. And I'll sit down and eventually look at it. But I know I'd get mad if I saw something I could have done differently and you know, so forth. But uh, how about some other questions? How about any of the... Friends and people we got in here, they got statements they want to make. It's probably the last opportunity we'll have to, you know, to do anything. How much fishing and golf is on the docket now? Well, the golf, I, you know, I, 
When this happened to me in the summer, I was actually playing golf. And I've got a couple friends that have asked me for 25 years to go up to Grandfather Mountain. we got a place up there. It's a beautiful place. It was. That is a beautiful place. You know, I've turned them down for 25 years. This year, I said, I'm going for three days. Well, then it just happens to me, you know. So the golf clubs are I really in the corner of my little room. They're sitting right there. Now, they let people out of class. <laughs> Come on down front. You don't have to get back here in the back. This, uh, they were asking about the player, just a couple of our senior guys right there, uh, Amon Ross and Amari Terry. Uh, the, um, speaking of players, talk on it. I told them this year, I didn't think the year before we quite had the ability I thought this year we were good enough to win the whole thing. And, and I just, like I said, I wish we could change a thing or two, but uh, we had some good players. They were, they were good. And uh, in those two cases right there, one of them's going to the Air Force Academy and one of them's going to Florida Atlantic. So uh, it's worked out for those two young guys. And we can. They're also, when I'm was in the hospital and going through things. So these guys are the guys that were there. So it means a lot to me. You know, I think uh, it's uh, it's fun when the young guys feel like that you've uh, treated them fair. I think that's what I always wanted was to treat people fair. I'm hard on all of them. I mean, I'm hard. I don't give in, and I'm relentless on some things. But down deep, I always felt like I was trying to do something for them. And uh, I don't know if they ever saw it that way, but uh, I thought so. How about some questions? Uh, how difficult, what will be harder for you, missing the first day of spring practice or that first Friday night? Or is, it, or, or is it just all of it? The thing that I like best, football practice is not fun. <laughs> Anybody think that's fun? <laughs> you got to experience a few more things in this world because <laughs> that's not a lot of fun. But I love practice because, I don't know, you see people... They don't want to be there. It, they're, it's hot always, and it's, you know, they're, it's just tough. But I'm a guy that always kind of enjoyed, I didn't enjoy practicing when I was playing, but when I'm coaching, uh, I enjoyed that aspect of it. And uh, uh, so, Gene, I think, uh, you know, obviously Friday night, you ever seen anybody that didn't enjoy Friday night? I mean, think about it. You know, I've had guys over the years say, hey, can I, can I help you coach? I can only be there Friday night. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> you know, I'd like to just show up on Friday night. It would be fun. But, uh, you know, the work's got to be done this other time. And uh, I think that our kids, you know, like I say, they know what they went through. And nobody, people... We got into public, private school conversations from time to time. A lot of people forgot I was in the public system for 20 years. So I've been on both sides of the, of the deal. And I can promise you one thing, putting in the effort, putting in the work, it doesn't matter where you are. You have to do that to be successful. Our guys wear a shirt and tie to school. Public schools, you don't. Does that make them a lesser person? No. It's just a different situation. Do I think in my heart that doing it this way is best? I do. You ever tried to come to a bowls practice and not have a pair of white socks pulled up high? 
You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ask the players. I'll send a guy off the field that quick because a football team, we don't, we don't believe in individuals around here. I want white socks. I don't want those little things that you wear in the mall that have a ball hanging out the back. <laughs> They're little footies. They're great for some things. They're not good for football. When I took the job at Lee High School, they were wearing all black cleats, and they were one and nine. So I said, I got to do something. This is not going to make it. So we were the first team in town as a group, all white shoes, high white socks, high white shoes. I don't even know if I liked them, but it, we looked quicker. We looked faster. We were still the same very average team, but we looked like we were queer. So what have I done for 40-something years? Exactly the same. Didn't want to change that. And these guys, if they have their way, we got orange plumes, things going. I mean, I, I can tell them not to do things. The next day, they're coming out with stuff on that I, I don't know where they come up with all this stuff. But they... Uh, they, they challenge you on that stuff, you know, as far as it goes. But down deep, on my whole purpose was trying to get us to be a team. You know, that's what I believed in. Uh, one year, and I won't mention the guys, we were playing here in town. You talk about not pleasing people. We uh, we beat this team. They they weren't very good, and we beat them. I think it was 68 to nothing. I had the mother and the father of the two, of the, I mean, of one of the opposing players just chewing me up and down. I tried to get on our bus to go, and they were all over me. You ran up the score. You did this to my son. You did this to my son. You know, I said, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I get on the bus. Well, right beside where I sit, right behind me, that was kind of our two best players. And I looked back and one of them was like this. And I said, what's wrong, brother? Nothing. I said, something wrong. What is it? Nothing. I said, just tell me, what is it? Well, you just cost me the rushing title. You only let me carry the ball three times. The lady thinks I'm running up the score. I got the best player in town, and he carried it three times. So you don't please everybody. I was trying to do what was right for the game, but I had hurt a young man on our own team. So you don't win all those battles, I can promise you. I'm looking out here, kind of a diverse group of people out here. I was so glad to see Coach Flynn, though, from our days at Reball and Reball Jr. We laughed about, if you can picture the era, when he was a student. It was my first job when we were young. I used to have a, a leather wrap. I had a paddle about this long. And I walked the halls, and I literally beat everybody. <laughs> Whether they were right or wrong, I did it. And it was, uh, that was our form of discipline back in those days, the way we did things. And he told me when he got to be head coach, he wanted to get a paddle so he could be the guy doing that. But, uh, uh, you know, times change. you got to change with the times. But uh, some of those things I, I still wish we'd get back to a little bit. You know, I, I don't know. I don't want to carry the paddle around anymore. But the, the, uh, it, another thing that you might like to know, though, in getting the discipline, uh, some of these guys that were at Lee High School with us, we, uh, we had rules for D's and F's. If you had a D, Mr. Peary, our longtime policeman, ex-Lee High School player for us, 
We, uh, you got so many swats for a D and so many for an F. And I would try to tell them, I'm going to try to hit you as hard as I can because I don't want you to ever get one again. Well, they didn't like, you know, that scared them to death. And I was in pretty good shape then and so forth. But, oh, they had to bend over and grab the things. And, I mean, it was a, we locked the doors. And, but that was just our discipline amongst the football players. So the teachers found out and said, anytime they had a problem with them, they just called us. You know, and that's kind of how all that stuff went down. But in a different time, different era, the way things were. How about it now? Come on, let's come up with a couple. Of... I, I want to say this. On behalf of thousands of guys, couldn't be here. Thank you. Well, Sean been with us ever since I've been at Bowles. And he, uh, Coach Morris, he works all the events for him here just about. And uh, he was a guy, what did you tell me, you, me and your dad? Yeah, two of us up in the And neither one of us thought you could play? <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That was a, that Sean said he was a good player for us. But uh, uh, it, it's been so much fun. You know, we had a guy this year on our team. And I, I don't want to miss him because it doesn't make him sound like he's not very good. But he started for us. And to me, he is the perfect Bowles example. He played a position that most people weigh about 230 or something playing. He weighed 175 pounds. And gave it everything he had. What a tough little nut. That to me is what an awful lot of bowls people have been. Guys that worked, played above their level of giftedness, but played hard. And I probably have as much respect for this guy as anybody. And yet, he never made any all state teams or any of that kind of stuff. But I knew what he could do. <coughs> And, you know, nobody had sacrificed for it. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things like that and thoughts that I have about guys. And many of the guys that you seem to like over the years and care about really weren't the best players. A lot of the best players thought they could do it with you or without you. But a lot of the medium guys, they felt like you were helping. So... You know, that's, that's why I think some of the guys that I'm closest to today are guys who are kind of medium players that I love them you know, for what they could do. The, uh, I mentioned to my, my son-in-law, my wife, and my oldest daughter are sitting there, and uh, the sacrifices that they've been through again, because for us, it, it's an all-year deal. These players, I mean, it's every day. There's no time off. There's nothing. And so for a family, we literally haven't been on a vacation. We, we went to a lake a time or two and did something, but it's just always been football. Conditioning is whatever. So uh, it's, a, it's been a big sacrifice for them over the years and what they've done. And uh, I do appreciate it. And I wish that uh, sometimes people don't realize how hard it is on the families and how they have to adjust their life around yours all the time. So it's a uh, thank you, girls and guys. Uh, anything from the school? Anything about? Um, 28 years ago when we came here they had uh, Mr. DeMont Mullen was the head man and uh, 
One of the things that he did that I thought would have, I was so impressed with was the fact that he was a guy that did not particularly care for athletics. He was the head of the English department at one time. He was a very smart man. But he realized the importance of athletics. And he gave us this chance to coach, to, to do it on our own, very little never bothering us, never saying much to us, letting us do the job. You know, nobody would ever have to check if we were at work. We were here every day. So the freedom they gave us and it started with him was very, very important. And uh, I think that uh, that's one thing that we've been blessed with here at the Bowl School is, is letting us do it on our own and try to do it the best way. And, you know, we made plenty of mistakes along the way, for sure. But uh, a lot of good, too. Yes, dear? Coach Rogers, I want you to know something. And that's that for the past 24 years, every week in my classroom, I saw evidence of the fine moral development that you poured into your young men. And I want to thank you for that. You've been a mentor to all of us, not just your boys. Well, that, that's so kind coming from you. Uh, she's a, a, such a well thought of teacher here at school and uh, uh, yeah we've been here almost the same amount of years not, not much difference in what we've done but I appreciate and I, I hope that people feel that way you know we're, we're, we're just people we're not we make a million mistakes every day but it's a we tried to do it the right way. And uh, I think that the, the guys know that we coach, that we try to do it the right way. You know, we're not perfect in what we do, but uh, it's, it's a situation where I think bowls in general, the way their sports program is run, uh, Coach Morse, the athletic director is in charge of it, uh, it's top of the line. And people do things the right way, and and there's a lot to be said about that because in some places, it's uh, now here comes some big guys. That's a couple of our players. Corky, I don't have a question, but a statement. Uh, thanks for pointing out how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> we have a great new headmaster, and I no longer speak for bowls, so this is personal. I worked at the university level for 30 years before coming here. And I've seen a lot of coaches who have great one loss records who are win at all costs and do it the wrong way. Uh, it's been an honor to have you on the team here because you've established that outstanding record doing it the right way. And in contrast to that couple that uh, berated you for running up the score, uh, <laughs> these folks need to know I happen to be standing beside you after we won a state championship game. I don't know this for a fact, probably the only one where we won with a running clock. That and, was fun. And a couple, uh, a mother and father of a player on the opposing team came up to compliment you, thank you for not running up the score, and thanking you for running a quality program that their school wanted to emulate. So I thank you too. Thank you, Doc. Doc Trainer was our head man here for many years at our school, and uh, he's worked in, in college presidents. He's done a lot of different things here now. So, uh, uh, are you going to the what's it called this weekend? The car? Yes, sir. He's big in, in that. Uh, what is that called? Uh, Concourse to Elegance. I can't speak French. Yeah, that, I don't think there's any West Side cars in that time. <laughs> <laughs> growing up. I don't have a car in the show either. <laughs> a couple of our players came in. One, uh, E.J. Porter, who's uh, going to Coastal Carolina. Proud of him. And then our junior, our big tackle. Have I ever seen how big this guy is? <laughs> Take a walk up here, sir. Come on. Up here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I know I'm shrinking a little bit.
think it was six three and four something like this. Yeah, that's how it's good. You can see, I measured him the other day in class. I measured him. But the book I had that put the book up here like you get it on top of his head, the, the level thing that we were doing. But we measured him. I know they measured him. He was at the University of Missouri this past week. And they measured him, they offered him a scholarship. He's a junior. But they, uh, they measured it. I had him at 6'9 and 4. That's a big, big person. He's, uh, he's doing well. And I told him that he's losing a little here. I'm getting it. I'm missing it. I'm missing it. I'm missing it. There you go. Come on. I just wanted to give you a little break and thank everyone for coming. And Good. Let's give you a rest for, for, we can all be reminiscing here all day. <laughs> Good. If anybody, you know, anybody wants to, obviously I've got, really what my plans are right now, I'm going to work the next couple of weeks and then I'm going to officially step aside. But, uh, I'm going to be around, and uh, people need me or anything, I'm here. So uh, that's what, you know, that's what our plans are right now. But uh, hey, I do thank you guys. I know you had something better to do than be here with me. But uh, uh, anything you can say about our school or our team or stuff would be appreciated. Thank you, Corky. Okay, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you.